All right. Hey, if we're going to do something stupid, let's start right here. This is great. There's going to be a lot of guys like, this is stupid. Um, this is the Max Ace Goliath. It's a big knife. If you want a small knife, we got one for you, right? We got a bunch of them around here for you. You can have a little knife. This is big knife time. So you don't like big knives? Get out. Max Ace, Goliath, 10 inches long, four and a half inch blade of Bowler K110 Crazy Ass Steel. And, of course, you can get it in the more sophisticated Micarta. Titanium bolsters and pocket clip. I don't think the backspacers are titanium, but we can check it out pretty quick. Nope, don't think so. But we're going to took it apart, so we'll show you pretty soon. Um, I threw this one on the ground because I'm an idiot. So bounced off a uh, ceramic tile floor, and I about crapped my pants right there. Good thing. At my age, we got depends, so we, we got backup. Uh, but, I mean, look at this. Look at this. Oh, crap. But, I, I mean, I'm lucky that I got away with no more than that because the blade popped open when it hit the floor and I'm just lucky that I didn't do worse than that. And these are nasty cheap almost, aren't they? 128 smackers on White Mountain Knives. And as I do this video, they are available. I mean, they had them out. They had the Goliath, uh, they had the Goliath the first model that they made. Now this one's different because the blade is different. Full flat grind. There's some other things. I'll put it down below or, you know, put it down in here. There's some other things they've enhanced. They've changed a few little things here and there on it. And so, yeah. Oh yeah. That just jumped away, didn't it? Okay, your turn. Okay. Uh, yeah, I like this full flat grind. And they said they widened the blade, and I don't know if it means that or this. So, um, and I don't have my old one anymore. Damn it. Wish I still had it. But I definitely jumped on these, and I'm definitely going to keep one of these two knives uh, long term because I really like them. They're great looking knives. Let's put the tape to it. So you can get it micarta. I think you can get it without the blue bolster, just a uh, you know, just regular silver bolster. Um, okay, four and a half inches, 115 at least uh, millimeter long blade, and that's close enough for 10 inches. We'll call it 10 inches and 25 centimeters. Whew. Okay. Where's the fat man stick? Come here. Let's let's figure out how big it cross. Oh, seven tenths of an inch. Well, close. 0. 0.68 at 17.3 millimeters. I don't think that's going to change. No. Uh, blade stock, probably four millimeters. Close. 3.8 at 0. 0.15. Um, that's amazing, isn't it? You know what? Let me hold on. Let me back this up right up to here. Uh, and try it again. No, 0.38. Okay, okay. Because I was just seeing this grind come out and going, if it's full flat, maybe this is a little wider, but it's not. It's the same. Woo! Goliath. Great looking knife. You know, I guess what I like about these knives is, first of all, they're big. And second of all, they've got great action on them. Um... They just, it just falls around with you like that. Maybe a little guillotine-ish for you. Centered, let me try this one. And uh, this is, yeah, uh, maybe I could tighten the pivot on this one and make it a little bit more like this, where it's, you know, more hydraulic. That's centered up too. I'm not getting any blade player lock rock, and that's, 35 to 40 percent lock up on that and pretty much the same on this one so that looks pretty good but to me it looks like steel liners that way you don't have to put in a hardened steel insert 
because it is a steel liner. Um, just big old hosses, aren't they? Let me grab my number eight, see if I can... Oh, yeah, that wasn't quite as tight as it could be. I mean, even... There you go. Okay. Well, I've probably been playing with this one a lot more, and that that explains that. And it is dead-ass centered up. My card is interesting. I almost got out my uh, mineral oil but, and put it on here to darken it down. But I thought I'd do this and show you how it comes uh, out of the box. At least for me, it did. And it'll darken down with time with skin oils and stuff. Or you can put some mineral oil, take the pocket clip off to do that, and then and see how long that that lasts. I don't know. It could still fade out a little bit. But that's not a bad look, is it? Wow. Uh, D tends not that strong. It's not. I can do that. Uh, 3.8 at best for a D tent. That is one way to open the knife. Now, part of the deal is the fact that it's just a heavy blade. It's a big heavy blade. So it's going to defeat the detent ball quickly. Flow uh, is good. The design flow is good. And blade to handle length is fine. I mean, it's really close there. So I, I do. I like the design. I think maybe this... And, you know, the Max Ace Balance, which they made a Balance M and a Balance S. Uh, so I like the Max Ace Balance, and that's really inexpensive. And then this, this Goliath, I mean, 128 bucks. And just remember, LTK is your discount code for 10% off. So what's that? Almost $13 off. Okay, so this is just a little over 100 bucks. Not too shabby, and they are sharp, and that's a big old flat grind, and that's very usable for piercing and slicing. Yeah, it is. They did a little cutaway in the flipper tab here. It's jimped. There's your stop. You got jimping on top of the blade. You don't really have a go forward position here, but you do have a little choil here, so it shouldn't be difficult to maintain. Especially since it's like a D2 type of material. So it's not a super steel. It's not going to take diamond stones to have to do that. And you can always strop it back up and everything. So, I mean, I like the comfort in the hand. This is very neutral in here. So the ergos are great. I mean, it's the design and the ergos really on this knife. If it was a smaller knife, like 9 inches or 8.8 .8 or whatever... That'd be fine. I mean, it it's it's just a great looking design. It's easy to break loose, and I know there's multi-row ceramic bearings in here because I took the old model apart, and yes, it has multi-row ceramic bearings. So I know what's in here, and I know that's why it's so damn smooth on the drop. Yeah, pocket clip works and maybe it does not look like it will that well and it does stay out of your way when when you're holding the knife you don't feel it that much because it's so low towards the scale but it actually does go in and out of the pocket or it does for me at least so oh, man <laughs> that's something else it really is and one thing we've dallied about, we haven't got around to, is weighing it up. No, no, it ain't three ounces, okay? So, you know, no, it's not. It's 7.72 ounces, and it's uh, 218 grams. So, it is what it is. You can carry it. I promise you, I have. I like carrying it. I think it's a hunk. But, you know, it doesn't really show that much in your pocket. So, I mean, it's not that detectable in your pocket. Even though it does have some width here. I mean, it's contoured. Uh, really feels good. Reverse grip, like I said. Wow, that, that's nice too. I mean, it's, it's definitely ergo friendly. That's a good looking knife. I think there's a lot of guys that jumped and bought this. And they were still in stock when I'm doing this. Now, this may take a couple days to post. But um, 
in this white G10. Isn't this nice? So I'll give you the link. Click on there. I uh, can't remember what other handle options you had. It may have just been these two with either silver or blue bolsters. And I like the blue bolsters. Saves me issues about having to anodize. Uh, I guess one of the things that I might have liked would be like a white G10 backspacer. I always like to have a backspacer. I always think it kind of finishes the knife. And this does not. So that's one of those things that I would have druther had. But I, I don't know if you can really give a knife a deduct for that. Because it's not anything, you know, defective or, you know, done wrong. It's just a decision they made in doing it. And, of course, you don't want to add any more weight. Although you could have reduced the weight of these if you would have added a micarta or G10 backspacer. So I think the overall weight wouldn't have been affected, actually. But, I mean, take a look at that. Look at the standoff. They're, they're pretty hale and hardy, and so is that blade stop, is it not? Where's my balance on this dog? Uh, it's good. It's easy to find, that's for sure. I don't know if it's good or bad, but it's there, and it's easy to find. As you can see... Right hand, tip up only, not left hand. And uh, maybe that's too bad, I don't know. I, yeah, I don't know if it would have affected me one way or the other had they put in for a left hand option or not. Fit and finish is good on Max Ace knives. I've got no issues with that. I don't have any gotchas. I don't have any issues here. No sharp edges. I can't touch the blade through here. See how far down that is? So can't do that either so that that's that's good that's good uh it's easy to disengage here see that pass through just boom and it hasn't overcome the detent ball yet but it's not a problem believe me uh even if you don't get it past the detent ball like that just do like this and it it breaks over it that's too much blade to hold back Take a look, both knives. And if you want like a comparison, I mean, here's your Spyderco Paramilitary 2. Yeah, it's, it's just, and even like throwing out the Vexor, which is a nine inch knife, no doubt. This is a big knife. There's nothing there, there's nothing there. Now, if you want to play with the big boys, Run with the big dogs. You got to run in the high grass. And here you go. There, right there. Or in the tall grass. Is that tall grass? The Mammoth from Midnight Cat Studios, which is also Max Ace. Isn't that magic? Max Ace, MC Studio. So they make the, this knife for MC Studio. And I don't have the glass breaker on the end of this one. But this is a 10-inch monster, too. These are the same length. I'll flip this over. Kind of change. See what I'm saying? Uh, change your perspective. But uh, that's a monster, too. And that's... A, well, last I checked, that was available on White Mountain Knives, too. And I'll guarantee you one thing. It's not 128 bucks. <laughs> not even close not even close add about 300 bucks to it but i mean you can get 10 percent discount and all that but I, I just i don't know something completely wrong with me uh went berserk and i, I had yeah, of course i had to get it of course i had to get it it's an amazingly crazy knife I reckon since I threw this SOB on the ground, I might as well be the one. This might as well be the one we take apart. Jeez. I mean, my heart stopped. <laughs> that was uh, that was not a good thing. It was not a good thing. I wonder if that pocket clip is number eight or number six. Is Come here. Get you off of here. It's like it wants to jump off on me. I'm not sure I even need to take this out of here. Are these number eights? Hell no, they aren't. What do they think they're doing putting number sixes on a pocket clip? 
It's, that's not right. Not on a Mongo knife like this. That should be illegal. Okay. Come on. Keep going and going and going. Okay. We got these. And... Yeah, one's longer than the other. So, we got to remember that. Which means, yeah, it's going through here probably. That's why. Okay, so we've got the micarta off on here. This should be no more than just a... This should pop off, shouldn't it? I mean, I know I'm going to have to take these off to, to take the whole thing. Oh, well, to hell with you then. I mean, we can play that game, right? Um, let's just take these off. I bet these are number eights. Okay. So we got these inside screws. Doesn't surprise me. I'm sure I'd remember this from the last time if I remembered what I ate for breakfast today. But here we go. At least I got it on tape because I got the review of the earlier model on there somewhere. So, uh, And here we go. Everything's falling out. Everything is falling out. But what I want to fall out. There's the front from the presentation side. Come here. Backside. Backside. And multi-row bearings that are ceramic. And everything just wants to fall apart on me. But, dude. Um, stop him. Got the blade out. Here's the other set of bearings. Uh, this is... Yeah... You know, this is not coming off real easy because you got that. And so you almost need to kind of give it a little wiggle here. Okay, now, come on, just be good. Okay, well, it's definitely skeletonized. And, oh, Lord, see? Sometimes you don't want to try too hard. Just go with it uh, because that's why it wouldn't come off. That's why the surround wouldn't come off. It's bolted in on from the inside. Wow. I don't remember that. But that's what it is. It's bolted from the inside. It, what kind of crazy is that, huh? Okay. So, what do we got? We had all kinds of screws in here. Exterior. Pocket clip screws. Liner bolster and what do we got yeah so at least we got a d-shaped pivot here so if we come through then it should be on this side because that came through from the presentation okay yeah there it is so right there them little teeny divots looks like somebody yanked and cranked down on them bearings maybe too much doesn't that look like that to you Something, I don't know. I mean, it didn't seem like it was overly tightened to me. And that, I mean, it looks pretty clean. Oh, and by the way, yeah. And this is something that uh, uh, Gabe said on Instagram, one of the guys that messages back and forth with me. He says, yeah, um, they actually did a detent ramp, which I haven't seen on any other knives except the Tucson knives. But they did it. A detent ramp so that's nicely done so let's see if we can muddle our way back into the reconstruction of this knife and I'd say probably the very first thing I need to do is to reattach uh, the bolster to here because yeah I and I couldn't figure out why that wouldn't pop off I really thought it should and there's a short little screw in here and I think that's the one no, I don't think that's the one. I think this is the one here. So that may be something you might want to segregate if you ever take it apart or even remove the bolster, which, you know, now that you're looking at this, you go, you really don't need to do. Yeah, that's flush. You don't need to do that to service the knife. You can just leave that bolster attached and take it off. Actually, um, yeah. Yeah, you can do that. Okay, so... Here's the front, and then, of course, we got the pivot, 
with the surround and the pivot's a one piece pivot. It's got surround and it's got the D shape. So we want to put it through there and we want to make sure the D uh, is pointed downwards. I'm sorry, I move it back from my camera because I'm looking under my camera. But so that should center, okay, that should center the logo, okay? So just look for that and then put these little puppies and they look very clean, actually. Let me get my K, uh, KPL. But you got some surface area on here and I think it's good to do multi-row when you've got a big blade. Don't you think? Because you, you need to give it more support around, around here than a smaller ring would provide. And here, I mean, if I was doing a knife, if I made a bigger knife with a big broad blade and I was going to put bearings, I'd put multi-row just to give it more support. Uh, okay, let's throw our little uh, stop. And that stop, baby, that, that's hoss. That's some hoss right there. So push your ass in there, okay. Now, what am I trying to accomplish? <laughs> I have no idea. Okay, I think we're good. I'm liking to think that we're good. Okay. Um, now, I can put the beauty ring back on and throw this on just to kind of give myself something to stomp down on. Hold it together for a while. Okay. Now I've got a couple of screws that go in here and they should be the same, same length, snap, okay. These should be the same length and they shouldn't be that long. Um, and I'm thinking, uh, I've just got a single screw Hold on. I got a long screw for that one and a shorter screw. Those are those. And, uh, wow. I'm thinking these are it. These shorter screws. And see, I got... I didn't keep my gear separate like I should have. But these are shorter screws and they shouldn't need to be that long. Because they're just going from the liner into that. And underneath, did they? Yeah, okay, they machined the space. So even if it's not flush, I know that that's fine. Because I'm just seeing one lonely screw out here. And there's only one right here that's not the pocket clip. And it's longer, but it's going to have to be the one that, that goes here. Right up here. And that's what I think that's all about. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. Yeah, there is a long and a short, but they're number sixes. So I taught myself a lesson. That was a number six sitting there. I almost made a mistake. So that'd be like the first time in my life that I ever did that. Wow. Close call there. Um, yeah. So that's a number eight. So thank God that these are number sixes or I could have messed that up possibly. Uh, I don't think this is going to be appropriate, but let's see. Okay, that is fine. And this one is not quite as long. So the shorter one was on top and I was full of malarkey. Yeah, there you go. That's exactly right. The longer one, well, it needed that travel to come through the micarta and that thick old liner there. And this one, for some reason, was just going... 
Um, oh, it just goes into the liner. It doesn't go into the spacer because the one underneath does. So, okay. This only has to go through the micarta and into the liner because there's a screw underneath here that goes into the spacer. And then this screw has to be longer because it's got to go through the micarta and the liner. So I'm getting bass backwards on this, but we got it back together because there's really uh, not that many possibilities when you start putting it back together. Now, let's see if I've got that. Ooh, that's not bad. Get this thing. There's no play. Maybe a little guillotine-ish. And I don't want to crush those bearings, though. Eh, that, I think that's good. You know, I think that's good. I'm not going to play any harder than that. And that's good. That's not bad. That's more hydraulic. Yeah. Okay. We're back with these couple of crazy dogs. Uh, yeah, I like them. I do. What more can I say? Not much. I know they're heavy. I know they're big. I don't care. Uh, man, it'd be kind of interesting to see them. Well, I was thinking in like an all G10 version. You know how they've done bolster type stuff on a G10 knife. And I was going to see if I could find my, yeah, my swordfish around here. You know what I'm saying? So if you did a total G10 version uh, for like, 55 or 60 bucks that'd be kind of interesting too because you would drag that around and go you know i got a big dog but i'm not going to worry about hurting it you know uh this may be starting to get in the range where you're a little bit more careful and guarded about what you're going to do with your knives i'm going to let you go love them knives that's what we do around here so you guys stay sharp my friends